Hi, my name is Ryan Booz, and I'm a developer advocate with Redgate Software. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Flyway, the industry-leading migration management tool for all of your database projects. One of the problems we begin to find the more projects we manage, however, is beginning to understand the status and the state of each of those projects. You can see here that just in my sample kind of playground that I have in my laptop, I have five separate database projects. And within each of those projects, I have multiple environments. And as I work on migrations and I work on pipelines uh, that you know, progress those databases through the changes, it becomes challenging to see across my projects kind of where things you know, lie, especially if I work with a team and other people are, you know, checking scripts in, we're migrating various environments to check those uh, changes and so forth. And so today what I want to talk to you about is a new service that Redgate is providing to all Flyway users called Flyway Pipelines. So let me first show you inside a Flyway desktop. Uh, by the way, if you are a community user in particular of Flyway uh, and you haven't tried desktop, it's a free download. It's a cross-platform application, and it's a great way for you to manage your migrations, see your environments, uh, even do some version control inside of uh, the Flyway desktop, which really allows you to streamline the management of those migration scripts. So regardless of what version of Flyway you're using in Flyway desktop, we can see our environments, and we can see the migration scripts are currently part of our project. So currently in this project, I have a baseline script and a version script, and then I have a repeatable script that is set to run on production. That repeatable script is a way that I'm using to manage static data in one of the tables, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But again, I have multiple environments that I can see are set up within this project. I have a development environment. I have a build environment. That's where I test to make sure all of the scripts can run in order without an issue uh, along the way. I have a staging environment that might have more realistic data, and I want to check all of my migrations, my schema changes against something that's more realistic. And then finally, we have production. At some point, we want these changes to be deployed to production so that the application and our users can take advantage of the improvements. Now, you'll notice in this demo, all of my databases are here on my local laptop. It doesn't matter where the database is as long as Flyway can connect to it, uh, whether it's in a pipeline or even just manually at the command line or here in Flyway Desktop, you can use uh, the, everything we're gonna show you here just in the next few minutes. So I have five, four environments in this project. And as I migrate, you know, create a new migration script and I work that migration through, seeing the status can be a little bit challenging. I can, uh, at the command line, use Flyway with the info command and I can see the state of that database. But what I can't see is what's happened over time easily. I don't have a record of the, the last time a particular, you know, migration ran and exactly what scripts were run during that migration. I can see that they were applied. I can see that things were rolled back if I do something like that. Um, but having that tracking, being able to see across projects and environments can be a little bit of a challenge. And that is what Flyway Pipelines is designed to do. So let me show you briefly Flyway Pipelines and what it is that we're gonna show you here as we progress through the next few minutes. So uh, in so this is something we've just released uh, here at the end of August uh, publicly for anybody to try that's a Flyway user. And what we've created is a, really a new gateway, a new website at flyway.red-gate.com. And it's going to become kind of your online portal for all things Flyway. So what is Flyway Pipelines? It is an online application that you can publish the results of your migrations uh, to the online application for all of your projects and across all of the environments within each of those projects. It becomes kind of your single pane of glass for your migrations, uh, whatever the database might be. You might have a project for Postgres and one for SQL Server and one for Mongo and Snowflake. Whatever your projects are and however many environments you have, all of them can publish their results and you can see across all of those projects the status of uh, those migrations. So let's go ahead and look at this new portal. 
And you'll see that this does require a login. Uh, this is a Redgate uh, hosted tool, and we need you to have a Redgate uh, you know, a client uh, user account. So when I sign in, we're going to go to the Redgate identity provider. And if you don't have an account, don't worry, you will be prompted. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use one of my personal accounts, Ryan at softwareandboost.com. And it turns out that that is not a Redgate account. And so I do need to create an account if I want to use that with my projects. Now, again, this is necessary so that we have a connection point between Flyway and the online service. It's also the way for you to connect with Redgate with some of our tools and products, uh, including Flyway, and make sure that you have all the latest changes and updates. So let me go back and log in with my Redgate account. And you'll see that once I log in, I end up on the landing page of this new Flyway gateway, this Flyway portal. Now, there's a couple things I can do right here from the uh, entry screen. I can download the version of Flyway that, is, you know, that I need for my environment. I'm on Windows, so if I didn't have Flyway Desktop and the Flyway command line, which is included with the desktop download, um, I, can, I can download the, the version that's right for me if I'm on Mac or I'm on Linux. It is a cross-platform application. It can run anywhere. You'll see that we also give you access to documentation, to Redgate University courses on using Flyway, even some pointers to community resources that we provide. But the thing that we're concerned about today that I want to show you is Flyway Pipelines. And so from this screen, I can log in to the Flyway Pipeline application. Now, I have a brand new account. I have not published any results from any of my migrations yet. That's what we're going to show you here just over the next few minutes. I'm going to come back to the screen because the instructions that are here are really necessary for a CI CD pipeline, you know, something like GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps pipelines. So we're going to need to come back. We're going to need to create that personal access token. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then we'll have to change our configuration file just a little bit so that it works during that pipeline run. But first, let me show you that this is possible to do at your with your local machine, either through Flyway Desktop or Flyway Command Line. And the process is pretty simple. Once you have your Redgate account and you've connected to the Flyway Pipeline service, there are two changes you need to make, which will then publish your results every time you run a migration uh, against any of your environments and your databases. The first is we need to enable this uh, Flyway to actually publish those results. And we'll see here that this uh, means I simply have to put this new configuration inside of my Flyway TOML file that says, go ahead and make sure that we publish those results. And so if I go to Flyway Desktop, there's a couple ways you can get to that TOML file. Uh, up top here, we can simply click on that little folder, and that will get you to uh, wherever your project is stored on the local disk. Now, in that folder, you're going to have a Flyway TOML file. And this needs to be in the TOML file for later when we actually use this in a pipeline. You know, we want to make sure this is available um, across all the migration commands that we run. And so instead of false, we're going to say true. And this will enable this project every time I run migrate to publish those results. And then the other thing we need is our email address. That's kind of what connects to the service. And then if you're doing this locally, you need to actually authenticate the first time you need to authenticate the Flyway command uh, with the service. Now, back in the documentation, uh, that is actually listed as uh, step number three. And we have to make sure that we authenticate with the service just to make sure that we have that connection. And that's what, that's what works locally. Locally, when we do this, we get an access token that's essentially stored on our local computer with Flyway. And that means we don't need that personal access token when we're doing it locally or when we're doing it with Flyway Desktop on the local system as long as we have authenticated. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this command. And I'm going to go over and make sure that my Flyway command locally, my Flyway environment, is authenticated with the service. You'll see that I wasn't. And so it will prompt me to log in. And then that will ensure that we are ready to publish our results to the pipeline. All right, login was successful, and we'll see that we are good to go.
So now that we've all set up our local environment, all we've done is made sure Flyway is connected and we've set that one variable published results equals true. So let's go ahead and try this with a first migration, something new within our project. So I'm going to go back to Flyway and it's going to prompt me. It notices that I modified one of those configurations in my TOML file. It's going to quickly reload the project settings. And we're going to do a first migration script that's going to add a new column to a table. And so I can do that right here. I could do this uh, right in the file system. I could create a new version file as long as it was named correctly. But again, Flyway Desktop makes this really easy. It will actually version the file for you based on what is next. And so the script, the field I'm going to um, actually add is pretty simple. It turns out where I'm getting this information for this database of movies and actors and so forth, um, there's a new field that they've included in the data feed. It's called place of birth. And so I want to add that to the person table. So I'm simply going to do that in a migration script. Now I can name this again, Flyway, Ver Flyway Desktop versions it for me. And I'll just say new person field, and I'm going to save that migration script. Now again, since everything's set up locally, I can use Flyway Desktop, or I could go to the command line, type in Flyway with the appropriate flags and parameters and do this migration. But it's pretty easy to do here in Desktop. So I have this new uh, version script. I can see that it exists, and I can select an environment. So in this case, I'm going to add this field first to my development database. And you'll see that Flyway has examined the database, and it says, hey, guess what? Uh, we do have one pending script, which is right here. And you'll see that. So let's go ahead and actually run the migrate command. So what we expect to see is that hopefully this will migrate successfully. And since I've told it to publish results, we should see something in the Flyway service. So I'm going to run that migration. Again, Fly was going to check the database, see what migration scripts have already been run, determine the ones that must be run, and go ahead and do that. And assuming this completes successfully, we can uh, first see that, again, Flyway will show us that script has run. And while that's refreshing, I can go over to uh, Flyway Pipelines, the Flyway service, and you'll see that it refreshes, and I now see that project. And within that project, I have one environment because I've only migrated the development environment. And when I click on the development environment, I will see all of the, uh, the migrations I've done and what migration script has been run during each of those executions. So let's go ahead and uh, do that one more time. We're going to go ahead and try it with uh, the staging environment. Now, over in my staging environment, we'll see that there's something a little bit different. In this environment, there are two scripts that need to be run. And so what we should see is after the migrate, uh, the migration is, is complete, that in Flyway Pipelines, we'll get a new environment, staging, and we'll see that two scripts were run rather than just that first script that you saw previously. So let's go ahead and migrate. And again, Flyway is going to look at the scripts that have been run. It's going to determine uh, what it needs to do, run those scripts, and to completion. So now that we have that done, we should be able to go back to the Flyway pipeline. And so now we see that we have two environments that show up in our staging environment. We see that that migration was successful and, and we can tell that two migration scripts were run during that specific migration. So hopefully you can see pretty quickly that as you have more and more environments and more and more projects, having a tool like this, which can quickly show you the status the last time migration was run on an environment and what scripts were run it could be really, really helpful. But that's not all that we're doing. There are new features being added to Flyway Pipelines, you know, as quickly as we can. Uh, things like being able to view a check report, you know, looking at code analysis, seeing that here, rather than having to go to, say, your CI CD pipeline artifacts and pull that out in some way. And so really, we want this to become your go-to resource for tracking and managing all of your, uh, the results of all of your migrations across projects and environments. Now, doing it manually is, is, is fine, and we can see those results. But really, this becomes most useful when you can integrate this into your CI CD pipeline. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we trigger a pipeline for this project. So first, I'm going to go back to Flyway. 
And you'll see that in order to make sure this works in the pipeline, I have to uh, verify the files that have been changed. And so again, we have version control built in here. I can see that two different files were changed. I can see what those results are. So you don't have to go out to a separate tool. I can commit those changes. I'll just say demo. I'll go ahead and commit those, and then we can push them to the repository. So again, within Flyway Desktop, we've been able to manage everything about our migrations without having to go to the command line uh, or do things you know, across different uh, pieces of our system and environment. So now that those changes are in my repository, I have a local GitHub Action Runner on my system since all of the databases for this demo are here locally. But I'm gonna go ahead and trigger a workflow. And that workflow is going to build the database. So it's basically going to take a new database. Uh, it's gonna clean it, empty it of everything that is you know, result or the schemas that are managed by Flyway. And it's gonna run all the scripts sequentially to verify that they still run without error. And so that's just a good step to do within, you know, some kind of environment early on, you know, in the pipeline just to say, hey, we want to verify that something hasn't broken. If I needed to spin up a new environment, I could run these scripts and it goes uh, to completion. So we're going to head over to GitHub Actions. And I'm going to show you that I have this workflow set up. And basically it does three things. First, it builds, it tests all those scripts and migrates to make sure everything works. Then it migrates the staging environment. And once that's complete and each of these steps, I personally have it set to, you know, to be approved. And then once all that's done, when I'm ready, I could deploy those changes to production. So what we should see as I trigger this workflow manually, and again, I could do this through, you know, things like a commit or a pull request, all of that automation can be done for this demo. It's just easier to trigger by hand. So what we should begin to see as this workflow is picked up, and I see it should show here in just a second. There we go. We'll see that the build is happening and it's cleaning the database first, and then it's gonna go ahead and migrate that environment. And then we'll see what happens in Flyway Pipelines with this first run of the database. Now, again, this is a new environment. This is my build environment. So what we should hopefully see is a new environment showing within that project in Flyway Pipelines. So let's say that it go to completion here. It cleaned the database. It's run the migration. It's applied all the changes. Um, and this step has been successful. So if we head back to Flyway service, there we go. We have our new build environment. And we can see exactly what was done. We uh, The baseline script is run. Uh, we added our version two script, and then we also ran our version three script. So you can begin to see this work through. Now we have development and staging, but we still don't have production. So let's see where we're at with the next stage. So now we're gonna go deploy to stage, and I have a, an approval step set up, so I'm gonna go ahead and approve that. And let this run, and now this actually will just do that migration. It's gonna to connect to the database, it's gonna verify the state of that database with migrations, and then it's gonna go ahead and perform the migration. So in this environment, um, I believe nothing should be necessary to do, but we'll still see that the migration uh, was attempted in the pipeline service. And so you'll see that everything was already there. The current version is the version in the database. And we can go back here and see that I had a different um, name set up in my uh, specific pipeline, and I forgot that. <laughs> but we can see that in this case, it was at the state of, of uh, you know, what it was expecting. Therefore, nothing was run. And so we can actually hide those no-op um, things that didn't actually do something in the database. But finally, through the pipeline, and all this is happening simply by adding um, the, the necessary features, the, the parameters to the Flyway command, we can go ahead and let this thing happen. Now, this is just doing a check. It's not actually applying changes to a database. There was an error, but that actually shows up in a report later. But finally, if we believe everything's been done, we can go ahead and deploy to production. And production should have at least one script that needs to be run. And so as we let this run, 
uh, we'll go ahead and see what happens in Flyway Pipelines. Now, all of this is showing within this specific project, Flyway, my blue, blo blue box, Flyway demo. And each environment shows up as things are happening. And we'll see that uh, it's going to migrate that database. It did have one pending script. It's applied that pending script. It's doing some cleanup. And there we go. We have our production environment as well. And in this case, it ran just one migration. So we could begin this process over and over again, right? As we check in new migration scripts, we can trigger that within a pipeline and we can track the state of each of those migrations over time here in Flyway Pipeline. Now, the one piece I didn't show you is how to actually set this up for the pipeline. And the only extra piece that really needs to happen is a configuration variable that you'll need to do uh, within um, within your, your action repository, whatever that is. So in GitHub Action, we need to keep a secret uh, for what we need to do. And so when I go to the pipeline com uh, configuration documentation, you'll see that there's this concept of the personal access token. We talked about that briefly at the beginning. Uh, the personal access token is a way for the command line tool to authenticate with um, with the service without having to actually know your Redgate username and password. Now again, I can do this all locally because I've authenticated the Flyway application here on my system. But when I run this through a pipeline, I need to have that token. And so again, with your Redgate account, we can go to the, the link that's shown here in documentation. You'll see that I have a few personal access tokens already set up. One of these I'm currently using for my pipeline. You probably won't the first time you log in here. And so you need to say new token we will generate a token and you need to copy it here. We will never show you this token again because it's, it is a password uh, in, in essence for the service to be used. So you would copy this password and then over in your uh, GitHub configuration, in this case, my GitHub action, I can go to my settings, go to my secrets, and you'll see that I do have a Flyway Pipeline personal access token variable set up. And then within my migration script, uh, within my pipeline script, I'm sorry, excuse me for that, uh, we can see that I actually have a parameter with each of the commands uh, that actually just says, hey, go ahead and take that um, personal access token and configure it for the specific, specific environment. With those two extra things, I have a personal access token. I have the Tama file already configured uh, with the published results. I have my email in there. And as long as I'm passing in that authentication token uh, with the environment, it will start to show up automatically inside of the Fly Flyway Pipeline tool. So this is just the beginning. There's a lot that we want to do with this service. We would love your feedback. Uh, anytime that you have feedback you would like to give, you can click the uh, help icon uh, that's down here in the bottom right, kind of see it down there, and it will take you over to just some a feedback page that you can tell us something you would like to see improved or exactly what you're thinking about the service currently. Um, so please give this a try, regardless of what version of Flyway you are using, Flyway Pipelines and the new Flyway dot red hyphen gate dot com begins to become your portal for all things flyway and we hope that you will use it and begin to find value across all of the projects that you have thanks so much for watching we hope this has been uh, something that excites you and we're looking forward to hearing how it's helping you take care